Dear viewers, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum and a very good evening to you all. Welcome to our show, Scholar Alab, with Dr. Firdaus Alam, who is currently working as a senior lecturer at International School of International uh, Studies, uh, University of Uttaram, Malaysia. Ladies and gentlemen, um, he has been working in the area of um, international business and all sort of uh, uh, area of business uh, for last 11 years. And he has published uh, more than 92 um, articles, including uh, 42 uh, in a reputed journals. And he also has presented many papers in national and international uh, conferences. He also been working uh, in a various uh, research grants, uh, including um, you know some private and government um, grants. And he has been um, uh, working with different universities uh, with the different capacities there in German. So without further ado, we would like to hear more from him. And uh, we are very, very delighted to welcome uh, Dr. Fedos Alam. Dr. Fedos Alam, welcome to our show. Thank you very much, Dr. Mahfuz, Mahfuz Rahman. Uh, I'm very pleased to uh, having here to uh, discuss uh, among our research journey, uh, cultural, uh, academic cultural activities, so, uh, uh, good, uh, good evening, uh, viewers. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is Ferdos. You can call me Ferdos uh, from Malaysia, uh, Northern Malaysia. I am not. I am from Northern Malaysia, uh, affiliated with University Utara Malaysia. In short, it's called UUM. So. Uh, we are not a center of Malaysia. It's, it's uh, far from uh, Kuala Lumpur, uh, which is capital of Malaysia. So around uh, 500 kilometer from Kuala Lumpur to Sintok, uh, state of Kedah. So uh, as a senior lecturer, I'm uh, here with School of International Studies, uh, Department of International Business. So I want to share something uh, for my university. So uh, it's a chance to share my university. So uh, can I can I uh, share a video? Uh, oh, sure, sure. Possible, possible. Uh, uh, university corporate video, huh? I would like to share. <laughs> sure, sure. Just say, yeah. Down there, there's a share button. If you share, I think it will work. Yes. Let me uh, add to the skin. Yeah, it's good. Can I yeah. see it? Yeah, 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 please. Eminent, credible, sustainable. A global revolution in a truly competitive millennium. Dedication and commitment are the essence in facing challenges and fulfill hopes. Intellectuals play the most significant role in the creation of frameworks for future sustainable development. This is the pledge of University Uttara Malaysia. Managing means managing a huge number of people, how to position them, how to make them work, how to make them contribute to whatever it is that you want to achieve. So it is necessary for us to have a university that focuses on management. Management is the embodiment of University Uttara Malaysia, UUM. Management that is based on thought and intellectual where art, science, and craft meet. At UUM, the holistic educational ecosystems is not merely to produce alumni, but to lay the foundation for future leaders. Since its inception, UUM strives to produce graduates who are not only knowledgeable, but also thoughtful and devoted to their families and all stakeholders. With the high level of integrity, we hope 
that the contributions of UUM graduates to the religion, people, country, and also at the international level will bring positive impact now and also in the future. Emphasis is given to the advancement of the fourth industrial revolution, IR 4.0. The world sees UUM as an institution of higher learning, equipped with a state-of-the-art facilities, smart campus enfolded by nature. UUM champions the voice of its students. It is the voice of future intellects. So as a student graduating, especially from the University of Tara Malaysia, which is actually the management university, we need to make sure that um, they are actually equipped with all this um, proficiency. If you look at the world now, people are talking about sustainability. Go green. So UM is in the right place. Greeneries and the environment is certainly very conducive uh, to get the students to learn and to absorb knowledge. The educational reform has placed UUM as a credible institution regionally and internationally. Humanizing education becomes our focal point, thus giving a universal value to knowledge, virtue and service. Research and innovation by its academic fraternity are undertaken with seriousness not merely to fulfill the academic requirements, but to be at the forefront in shaping the industry. More than 100 million ringgit worth of research grants invested, and more than 7,000 academic publications in the field of management and business produced in the last five years. Facilities and amenities provided feature the latest in smart technology, complementing the tranquility of the lush green campus surroundings. First-class infrastructures within the exquisiteness and splendor of nature showcase the education ecosystems at its best. The facilities, the environment, actually creating individual uh, or students who have holistic skills from the perspective of academic, professional, as well as the social skill. We believe in developing students holistically that can serve the society and country as its future leaders with the highest integrity and professionalism. I'm actually happy to see how exactly the University of Tarot Malaysia have evolved itself to become a highly ranked university. University Uttara Malaysia over the past three decades has earned its own place by providing the highest quality of education and is marching forward towards achieving greater success and greatness. With the various awards and accreditations received, the future is certain and bodes well for the university. The Royal Patronage with the Kedah Royal House indeed provides vital publicity for the important work done at the university and allows the enormous achievements and contributions to society be recognized. UUM is a unique environment where the emphasis of the university is not just purely on academics. In this case, um, academics, sporting excellence, spiritual excellence, and by then, I guess we could live up to our motto of El Mubudi Bhakti. I love UUM, you know, and I'm proud to say that I graduated from UUM. UUM is the jewel valley of the North Malaysia. Ilmu Budi Bhakti. We yeah, love you, yeah. man. University Uttara Malaysia, the eminent management university. Uh, yeah, Dr. Fedos Alam, uh, if you could kindly share uh, opportunity for a higher education at your university, uh, UUM. Well, uh, UUM is a 
uh, in English it's called Northern University of Malaysia. That means that situated at northern part. Uh, it's a uh, corner northern part. It's called uh, very near to Thailand border. Uh, maybe uh, uh, only 10 kilometers uh, from our area, uh, you can uh, you can reach uh, Thailand. Okay, so uh, uh, this is a focus university in Malaysia. Uh, uh, it's it's not a general university. It's not a research university as well. It's a focus university. Its main focus on management studies. Uh, it's a management studies. So related to management, all all area is included, uh, like from uh, uh, science, uh, from arts, uh, some of uh, engineering part as well, um, uh, business law also here. So um, it, it's it's not uh, like University of Malaya, uh, they have uh, uh, engineering faculty, they have medical faculty. So you have, uh, the, we don't have this fa fa faculty uh, as engineering as uh, medical. So it's uh, mostly focused on uh, management related, business management. So uh, those who are interesting, uh, those who are uh, interested for pursuing their uh, PhD or uh, master's by research or master's by course, you can you can apply uh, UUM. So if you feel oh UUM is very far from uh, the capital, don't worry. There there are a lot of way to uh, uh, very good communication with the capital. You can go by bus. You can go by a train. You can go uh, by fly. So don't worry. Uh, every transportation is available here. So only one hour journey by flight. So, uh, and uh, UM, uh, I prefer uh, those who are interested uh, uh, to graduate uh, from UM. So we have a, a world recognized accreditation, it's called AACSB. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think only Malaysia, University Malaya, University Putra Malaysia and UM, they have only this accreditation of uh, those who are in business uh, related. So this accreditation is widely recognized. Uh, you, can, you can see uh, mostly uh, uh, advertisement. They prefer those who are from accredited university, those who are graduated from this kind of accredited uh, university. So uh, it's a privilege to, uh, to do your uh, graduate from here. And uh, there, yes. Sorry, Dr. Pardos. Uh, I mean, I was wondering, like, whether there, there kind of like uh, funding or scholarship for pursuing masters or PhD at your school. Yes, uh, uh, there are uh, some kind of uh, funding. Uh, uh, it's sometimes partial, sometimes full, but not not like a research university, as I mentioned. Uh, it is not a research university, so not government give uh, a huge uh, amount to uh, make us research. So uh, only uh, some of researchers, some of lecturers, some of professors, they have their own credibility. They uh, achieve the grant from various area, so they can only give you some um, funding like uh, graduate research assistantship. Uh, some of uh, some of funding also provided by university based on your uh, based on your uh, uh, performance huh? right. Be based, based on your performance because right. when after you uh, after you admit then you show your performance first semester then you can apply for this kind of uh, uh, scholarships right. so if you right. will feel right. uh, you are if, uh, eligible for that you can achieve this kind of scholarship so i think uh, no worries about uh, this. Uh, Dr. Fedos, by and large. Continue yeah. one more thing. Uh, compared yes, to is. other university, those who are situated in uh, Kuala Lumpur, uh, the tuition fee is very lower here. See. Uh, this is another uh, very uh, opportunity for them uh, compared to the, uh, and, and living cost also very, uh, right. very right. lower than uh, like University of Malaya, University of Malaysia, like this.
Yeah, I do agree. I could, I do completely agree with you that you know I I have been there. You know, it's a beautiful campus, and definitely you know the expenses compared to the Kuala Lumpur, uh, I think uh, uh, I mean they're pretty cheap in in that sense. Uh, Dr. Right. Fedos, I was wondering, like you have been teaching for uh, last five years in different part of the world, not only Malaysia but different countries and different universities, and you also have been uh, researching for eleven years. So I'm sure you have, uh, you know, uh, uh, you have identified your strength and, uh, you know, the networking, all those sort of things. So how do you basically position the networking in academia? What do you think about networking in academia? Well, uh, networking in academia is um, uh, very important, very important, uh, uh, what's called a strategy, a right. strategy right. for uh, achieving everything for your success. Uh, because you know, uh, you cannot uh, fulfill all of things alone. You must go together. Huh? You must go together. So, for example, uh, for networking, uh, you can find uh, supervisor networking. You can find your co-researcher networking. You can find prospective student. Huh? So, uh, networking is very important. Uh, so. Um, like uh, I can remember, I start my PhD in 2009. Uh, 2009, um, University Kibangsang, Malaysia. It's, it's locally, it's called UKM. Uh, uh, it's, uh, in English, it's called National University of Malaysia. Okay, so it's happened. How it's happened? Uh, my cousin was there, he pursuing PhD. So, uh, one day he told me, why not you come here to pursue your PhD? So I agree with him. Okay, let's see. Then I apply uh, for admission. Then I apply for uh, GRA, Graduate Research Assistantship. So you see how you get the GRA. That means uh, you have to have uh, get some supervisor. Huh? And you have to have uh, willing to do some research in their related field, uh, their related field. So matching uh, a student and uh, supervisor, their intention to do some research in same area. So if it is match, you can get some uh, funding opportunity. Yeah? So I start 2009. So uh, actually, uh, before I, I uh, complete my BBA and MBA, so within PhD and my graduation, my undergrad, um, I, I, uh, there is a study gap. It's not continue. Uh, like you, uh, you, you continue uh, a master's, uh, undergrad, PhD, it's continue. There is a continue process. But for me, it's a gap. Usually in Bangladesh, we have... Uh, uh, like this, after graduation, everyone shaking for job. No? Everyone looking for job, uh, career, uh, not not continue their higher study like this. So you have to have some motivation on this. Uh, so I, I could add uh, uh, that terms than uh, motivation. Uh, in uh, management, this term is very important. If you don't have motivation, so what you have uh, opportunity doesn't work. So you have to have motivated yourself first. Okay, you would like to continue your study. So you would like to get, take the challenge. Huh? So PhD life is a full of challenge and opportunities. So if you success, if you uh, fight with the, this kind of challenge, you can, you can win, you, you will be success, not only your PhD, but also your uh, uh, future career. Hmm? So that's why yeah, in this point of view, I would like to say that networking is very much important, not only to uh, start your journey of PhD, but also after PhD, you find your prospective supervisor, uh, for example, for uh, postdoc uh, post uh, post research. So this is also because of your networking and uh, networking. So you work and you have to, 
uh, share among the academician relates uh, related your related field huh? so right. then you can you can get the uh, related uh, supervisor related uh, professor for your uh, postdoctoral research so postdoctoral research uh, is a very uh, way to make you more more research uh, uh, track uh, more research track so some people uh, after graduate uh, they go for uh, teaching directly so compared to postdoc and compared to direct teaching so uh, you cannot get the opportunity to more do research uh, usually phd is a learning process uh, we call it it's, it's a learning process we learned how to research uh, how to research then after that we can start our main research so in this area networking is a, is a huge important thing you have to have uh, continue, continue networking, expand your network, uh, expand your network. Uh, so um, nowadays, you know, strategic partner, uh, you know, these terms uh, are very, very important. So uh, like we are talking uh, with the strategic partner with uh, link with. So <laughs> there must be a, a, a platform, there must be a, a, a partner. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Fedos, it's been, it's been 10 years. I think more than 10 years you are in a academia teaching and doing research. So I was uh, you know, wondering like, uh, if you could share a bit of your experience about teaching and research culture in Malaysia. You know, every country has their own culture, the way of teaching, the way of doing research, institution cultures. So what do you find in Malaysia? And if you could relate a bit of with Bangladesh or different other country that you have you have been teaching well uh, my research journey from 2009 uh, as i mentioned earlier that i start my phd to 2009 so that means uh, i start my research uh, from there before i don't have any experience uh, I, I could remember that uh, when first time i come to malaysia somebody asked me uh, how many publications do you have how many journals do you have? So I just simply reply, what is journal? What is publication? So, because I don't have any um, uh, previous experience on it. So it's a starting point. So slowly I learn uh, what is journal article, what is conference article, uh, this, this, this research uh, material. So you see, uh, Malaysia, for example, Malaysia is a, a nice place to this kind of academic environment. Uh, I found some uh, very uh, uh, helping uh, supervisor, then professor, then uh, colleagues, those who are pursuing with me, uh, same time they are doing PhD. So they share their experience with each other. Uh, so this is the, the environment. Is, uh, I must, must uh, appreciate in the environment for Malaysian education system. Uh, so uh, for for uh, your research, you can start without any experience like me. I start without any experience in the research. Then I learned slowly how to do research, how to do PhD, then uh, teaching. Huh? So teaching is the different uh, part from the uh, research area. So it's just a start uh, uh, with the experience of your background uh, background experience like from your undergrad what you learn uh, because we are teaching uh, actually we are teaching uh, whatever we uh, actually uh, we learn from the the background the basic background from the undergrad so so just you re remind uh, just you remind how what you learn from there uh, so so teaching plus your research experience uh, when you when whenever you uh, doing some research so you read a lot of article uh, we call it literature review uh, so we read a lot of articles so whenever we, we read a lot of article we have a lot of uh, knowledge uh, we uh, share a lot of knowledge among all academicians uh, by the literature review so uh, you, you get a, a experience how to deliver your lecture uh, with the example of uh, latest, with the example of latest scenario, what's happened, what's going on in the real business 
or real environment or real world so what is going on so uh for for those who are uh, uh, interested those who are uh, want to pursue but they have some confusion i can do or not uh, for them i can i can give you uh, uh, confident or motivation that you can do because i start without any any kind of experience uh, so why not you but uh, in in uh, 10 years back and 10 years later uh, situation is not same i see some of uh, lecturer some of student as well they have a good publication record nowadays uh, so people are people are uh, interested to do research uh, someone they don't have a degree like phd but they have uh, publication because they are started earlier in their research uh, journey so for them they, they are in advanced track uh, so don't worry you can start those who don't have any experience you can also start so in future those who are in teaching area for you uh, your career will be uh more more uh, opportunity eh? you can get more opportunity you can you can focus on research as well as teaching eh? so i think not only teaching will make you more uh focus but also uh research experience make you more uh enjoyable in your teaching line uh, so uh, you enjoy the it. Yeah. Is, no, when it comes to malaysia right uh, recently, the focus has been changed. Uh, the universities are putting high KPIs, key performance indicators for research. We got to be publishing papers in every single year. And we also yeah. got to uh, you know, teaching and also we got to be applying for research grants, right? So uh, tons of work are in the queue, right? So how yeah. do you basically uh, make a work-life balance when it comes to Malaysians' life, you know, the teaching life as an academician? Well, uh, as an environment, I told you the environment is very good to do research, to do teaching, to do uh, uh, research. You, you can apply for research grant. So I, I don't know about the other countries, but here in Malaysia, if you have um, experience, if you have um, uh, knowledge about the specific field, you can apply for the grant. So if if the ministry of the or, or the authority feel you are eligible better than others, of course they will select you for, for that. So regarding KPI, we have a huge KPI. Huh? Everyone knows. Uh, sometime in academic, uh, most of people they they work at night. Huh? Yeah. Late night. Sometimes they work late night to finish your research. Uh, article or whatever it is because it depends on the concentration uh, it's called concentration so maybe you work uh, five hours only one hour it, it will be genuine research you can write down you can uh, think about this so yes uh, this is a very uh, crucial job this is very difficult huh? but uh, if you join this environment uh, it will create automatically it it will push you automatically uh, so for survive uh, for survive you can do it you must do it right. like publication you must do it do or die no way you have, you have and the, the pressure pressure from the student uh, supervisor pressure okay publish publish then postdoc supervisor pressure publish publish your kpi you have to fulfill after the year uh, when you see, oh, how, how about your KPI? Uh, you have to fulfill your KPI uh, more than 90%. So it's automatically you can achieve because from a beginning, you, you will attach, you will uh, attach your environment, academic environment, academic networking, uh, academic networking. So that's why network is very important. Come back again in the networking because uh, in in our whole uh, area it must be it must be a network. Uh, so uh, so 
uh, this is very difficult. The question is uh, how we achieve the KPI, how we, so it's not difficult because uh, you have to have uh, fulfilled like in our KPI, 30% uh, teaching, right? 30% uh, teaching and 30% research, 30% uh, uh, publication. 30% publication, 10% research, and so many things is a blended way, blended right. way. Not only focus on one thing, you have to focus every aspect. You need to focus Dr. every aspect. Dr. Fedos, I was wondering when you, uh, you know, uh, target to fulfill the KPIs for your university, uh, do you also, uh, I mean, do you really feel a hard time filling up the KPIs for your family, being a father, being a husband, being a brother, being a son, you also do have a KPIs, right? So yeah. how do you balance it? You know, when you have a huge KPI or the KPI is quite high, I mean, do you have hard time or do you feel hard time? Yeah, of course, this is a very hard time because you have to give a family time. You have right. to give, you have to uh, give some friends, huh? uh, chit chat, uh, hang out. So uh, actually uh, after 10 years, I feel our friends all are academician now. Uh, so, uh, we make friendship among the academic environment. So whenever we hang out, whenever we <laughs> sit there, so all about how you publish, yeah. how, how we uh, uh, success this, this uh, how we get this uh, grant, uh, like this. So uh, uh, that's why whenever we feel, uh, whenever we discuss about something very difficult, then we discuss, oh, our this friend have this kind of experience. So let have a workshop on it and share their experience. Uh, so by this way, net, we use this network and we share our knowledge among us. Then we uh, uh, get this kind of ex experience and we share this kind of experience and we start our uh, uh, journey, start our uh, this area like uh, if it is uh, based on publication, if it is a, a grant application, if it is a teaching, so everything is like this. So sometimes uh, it's hard to get uh, time to, uh, what time you sleep at mo morning you have class, uh, that, but at night you have to complete your, you have deadline. Uh, you have to complete your uh, article and submit. Uh, this is the deadline. You must have submit within this. So right. now, now we are going for FRGS uh, application. Uh, so it's a deadline. So if you follow this deadline, so uh, you must have to complete within this time. So this is one kind of a pressure uh, you have to do. Uh, so uh, that is where, right. Dr. Fedos, looking at your publications, you know, you have over uh, 90 papers published and you also attended, uh, you know, many conferences in nationally and international level. You yeah. also have grants, right? So uh, long story short, right? Is there any perfect recipe to, uh, you know, publish a paper or to write a paper? Perfect recipe, you know, like A, B, C, D, you just mix it and it will be a research. How, how, how basically the young researcher will start doing research. How you start? For young researcher, um, or I can I can share my experience uh, earlier when I was young, when I was uh, very new, how I achieved this. So initially, it's very difficult to uh, start this kind of thing. Uh, whenever uh, when first time I start my PhD paper, how I how I start my publication from PhD thesis. Okay, very difficult. So I asked several people, uh, several people, uh, brother, how, how I do this? So they suggest, uh, okay, you read several paper, related paper, how they write. Uh, that means you just, you must uh, follow the step, what kind of step. Uh, so uh, like abstract, introduction, uh, discussion, methodology. Uh, so this kind of thing. So. How, how to write yeah, abstract, how to write abstract, then how to write introduction. So step by step, you have to learn. So uh, it's a very uh, uh, useful then, uh, useful if you have a friend or if you have colleagues, if you have a senior brother, if you have mentor, 
okay to help you like you are a very uh, new so you don't know how to complete all of things so you ask your uh, senior brother senior colleague so uh, i want to publish this one please guide me mm -hmm. so in this way those who are junior for them uh, you can get benefited mm -hmm. so uh, some of culture i see in my country uh, on some of university as well they want to do something um, alone uh, so it's not proper way uh, you have to you have to put some team then you can uh, make it a teamwork so together you can get uh, you can achieve all of those things and uh, you can see the achievement quality will be very high and uh, in, and uh, indeed you will be success so for networking in this area for those who are uh, starting your research those who are uh, planning to do in future you will, you will admit as a phd student uh, so it, it's no alternative right? you must collaborate with some of related uh, academy uh, those who can help you so you choose your mentor you choose your supervisor or you choose your um, uh, senior brother uh, those who you, you know so nowadays you can see it's not difficult to get a related relevant person like research get uh, so you must have to have you this kind of tools research get uh, it's the networking social networking within the researcher within the researcher so research get then linkedin linkedin so academia i do so this kind of uh, website you can get help uh, you can see so many related people are there so you can collaborate with them you can learn you can share your experience uh, uh, in facebook also so many group they 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 focus on that they focus on uh, related uh, different different uh, research uh, it's, it's called research uh, network research team uh, like like uh, you have uh, you have uh, what's called link with uh, you have a page link with page in facebook so in this uh, uh, in this opportunity we can take to help us uh, because without the information without the technology nowadays we cannot do anything uh, so you must use properly with this kind of support uh, with, with this kind of support. some of people they say oh facebook is a wastage of time no you, it depends on you how you use it uh, so uh, link uh, what's called linkedin uh, then academia do research get it depends how you use it right uh, 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 for those you know every now and then uh, you know being a phd student and also being a supervisor i'm sure you have a uh, wonderful experience being a phd student and now you are supervising so uh if i just recall back a bit of your journey while you were doing phd so what are the uh, core things that you learn when you you know uh, live alone with your supervisors you know you are living with uh, uh, different people right so what was your takeaway or lessons from your phd journey that many upcoming researchers or many of our postgraduate brothers from different part of the world they want to start their phd so what should be keeping in mind when we start the test match like right? whichever when it comes to cricket right we said test match so it's like yeah. a PhD, like a test match so what would be your suggestion to them to prepare for the test match to play uh, to, to go to play for the test match phd okay those who want to do phd for them as uh, my suggestion is i saw most of cases they select their topic uh, their own by their own so they are very new they don't know what's the impact of this research most of them uh, they choose their topic on on based on their area their their home country their hometown so sometimes it's not impactful uh, it's not effect uh, 
what's the contribution uh, usually uh, in the uh, viva we just what is your contribution in your research uh, in your phd research so basically uh, if you choose your own title in your own topic it will not uh, be suitable uh, so sometime i i, I realize uh, it's not not suitable so you must uh, decide with your prospective supervisor prospective supervisor okay uh, so in this prospective supervisor when you uh, discuss before discuss you must focus the few point okay one point to get funding it's an important thing uh, to do phd in other country uh, it's a very challenging uh, expensive uh, so it's you invest your time as well as invest your money so if you get funding you relieve 50 percent if you get funding you relieve 50 percent so that's why how can you get funding you must go some area whose area is have the funding like if you go for history huh? so obviously you cannot get any funding like if we compare uh, engineering if we compare social science so engineering they have a huge funding because they have patent they have product they produce it's a viewable product but in social science we don't have anything which can visible huh? we do uh, nothing visible so that's why very critically you have to find out your way you find out your topic your area that have at least you can secure your funding uh, secure funding so uh, business economics accounting whatever you you can say you must search which area uh, your supervisor your prospective supervisor have the funding for this 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 area so you focus on this area you focus on this area then you write a uh, proposal initial proposal you write then your supervisor if they impress on it that means if they feel oh you have interest on this area so they can call you right. to interview to discuss further then if you success uh, uh, after the interview after the conversation if your supervisor agree uh, convince enough then they can take you as a research graduate assistantship they can give you so by this way you can fund you can uh, you can get funding huh? so 50 percent pain will be recovered other 50 percent is your performance is your uh, hard work uh, is your hard work. dr fedaus uh, we have a related questions to phd yes. uh, can i take a question of course, and, of course. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. We have a brother, uh, Atiur Rahman, said okay. now, uh, very few months ago, I started PhD journey in India, and I'm from Bangladesh. What advice, um, what advised me to continue my PhD? I mean, what would be your advice to continue his PhD, if I'm not mistaken? That means you start your PhD in India. Right. Because your university is India, but due to COVID, you are in Bangladesh. Uh, he is from Bangladesh. He is from Bangladesh. So I think he is asking for some uh, advice, like how should uh, how to continue uh, his PhD journey. What would be uh, your advice to me? Uh, actually, uh, what aspect I should uh, advise you? Uh, what kind of problem you are facing now? It's the important thing to answer. Huh? So uh, overall overall thing is uh, in other country in uh, uh, when you go for other country like you are a foreigner so when you when you are go for other country as a foreigner you have some cultural problem huh? cultural complication you are facing cultural shock so first you have to remove all kind of shock uh, as soon as you can adopt with this this uh, environment uh, so different country different environment it can be uh, religious purpose it can be uh, language purpose it can be financial purpose it can be uh, environmental purpose uh, so 
as soon as possible you adopt this country uh, their culture is better for you uh, then you have uh, if you have no funding problem like some people they do B, they do phd with their uh, own funding uh, self finance so if self finance so no problem okay then if you have problem that your supervisor and you you have problem that means you need to be a good relation what your supervisor uh, desire uh, from you you have to read this thing uh, that means uh, your chemistry you should be a good chemistry with your supervisor if you can satisfy with your supervisor you can pass you can continue if you cannot satisfy so if you cannot satisfy doesn't mean uh, you are not hard worker doesn't mean you are not uh, you don't know about research uh, matching sometime i saw some of his student they think they are they know better than the supervisor uh, so if your supervisor feel this kind of situation you cannot be you cannot be graduated uh, so you must learn from your supervisor whatever they say like uh, whenever you go for defense uh, you have two examiner internal external you have to have fulfill their requirement uh, you have to have fulfill their requirement sometime it's a uh, sometime it's a very difficult oh, internal say this this way external say this way you have to combine you have to satisfy both so this thing this thing is very important how you satisfy your examiner uh, sometime you know some uh, professor they are in uh, from uh, quantitative research someone for from qualitative research uh, sometimes they get the uh, different uh, area uh, so it's very difficult so whatever it is they are from you have to satisfy them in their way so i don't know about uh, what kind of problem you are facing uh, so uh, it's a overall uh, advice for you so follow your supervisor uh, what what he want to do you just follow you just follow his way so i think uh, you got your answer. So, any other? Dr. Fedos, we are towards the end of our show. So, I would like to ask the last question and then we'll off the. Uh, Dr. Fedos, oh, well, like wondering when you are start, when you started your PhD, right? So, nowadays, because uh, PhD, having PhD is not enough to, you know, get a job. So, you got to have publications. So, the yes. student who just started PhD, what would be your suggestion if they want to publish while they are writing their thesis? I mean, how can they go about it and, uh, and get some data or do some literature review, whatever way you, you, you feel like they can start publishing when they are doing PhD? Well, uh, those who are, yeah, it's true. Nowadays, it's very difficult to get a job. Uh, even you have a PhD because you know the competitive world, so many graduate so many phd increasing day by day hmm? increasing day by day so you have to have compete with others as a suitable candidate uh, to prove yourself how you show it's uh, your your um, achievement how how many publication you have it's your achievement so still some of university they don't have any requirement to fulfill their phd huh? as a publication uh, no no requirement as a publication huh? like uh, in malaysia most of university they have a requirement okay at least two scopus listed journal you have to publish uh, some of university at least two isi uh, you have to publish at least two conference you have to attend every year huh? or uh, colloquium uh, like this so those who have this kind of practice huh, the student easily uh, under pressure, the student easily uh, go the environment. 
uh, in the system you got the environment uh, and automatically you learn what to do huh? so two or three paper now not enough huh? nowadays yeah. uh, nowadays because of, uh, 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 before uh, when i start my phd uh, people just apply and they got job even no interview or something nowadays two three time interview uh, first by dean then uh, faculty then hr then top management of the university there are a huge layer uh, in this yeah. system mm. the this layer why they this this kind of thing happen because of they choose the best candidate for the organization uh, they, they are not choosing you simply you got a phd uh, so that's the thing you have to publish a lot of article and prove yourself that in future also you can publish this way uh, so uh, my suggestion to increase their publication from your thesis uh, first you complete your literature review that means before uh, pd proposal defense uh, you complete your uh, literature review then you should publish first paper from your literature review what you learn from your literature review uh, in your area what is going on just review paper you can write because during this time you don't have a, any data and uh, so you cannot go for empirical thing so after that you go for uh, data collection uh, when, uh, whether it is uh, primary or secondary you go for data collection so after data collection you go for analysis so then again after got analysis you can go for another publication so when you go for uh, defense before defense if you have three at least two three publication very easy for you defense because your examiner will confident oh you publish from your research area so if you have three objective if you have four objective at least you should get uh, from different objective you should get different different article okay so you choose your objective uh, that you can get one article from each objective so if you have four uh, four uh, objective you can publish four article so you can uh, if you have five you can five okay this is your planning from before uh, that's why uh, don't waste the time so those who are new those who are already start so so first time very difficult first publication is very anything is when it's first time is very difficult so you must take help from the senior uh, sometime we go for collaboration sometime we go for uh, networking uh, so that's why sharing your knowledge is very important among your environment among your colleagues among your uh, mate uh, sometime uh, you are alone so if you are alone if you stay at home it's very difficult to continue your research. You have to have uh, involved with this environment. So nowadays in, in COVID-19, most of them are at home, at their hometown. Uh, so virtually we are doing everything nowadays virtually. Virtually uh, uh, we are doing office, virtually we are doing meeting, virtually everything is that. Uh, our load is increasing, not, not decreasing. It's more, more than normal time. So you must be involved with your niche with your colleagues with your uh, research colleagues with your research mate uh, so you must attach so many group facebook group they are uh, sharing everything uh, so i saw uh, uh, your uh, link with uh, today i saw you shared that uh, literature review huh? what's the uh, focus point uh, in literature review what should you focus on it so you can see so many supportive documents now it is people are sharing each other uh, uh, compared to before now is is available everywhere uh, even you can you can get the uh, uh, nowadays uh, access a uh, free access yeah yeah free access journal you can get the uh, very quality full article you can get easily uh, by the research gate you can ask the author to share their knowledge share their uh, article they can share it. So by this way, you can uh, do it.
so for okay. this uh, advice for the new those who are okay uh, thank you thank you dr uh Ferdows. dr Ferdows, just uh since we don't have uh, many questions so uh, if i may ask you one more last question like if yeah, someone sure. some 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 people right some students from uh bangladesh pakistan india this part of the world right they would uh yes. they would like to come to malaysia because malaysia somehow became a education hub to some extent yeah. it, yeah, it is a for masters and phd right so what yeah. would be your a brief suggestion if they would like to come for masters and phd uh, in malaysia well uh for those who want to come uh malaysia as malaysia they focus for education very highly uh, so that's why uh, the government also focus for the research grant uh, for uh, bring the international student, uh, so bring the international lecturer to improve their quality, uh, as this is also a requirement for several accreditation to uh, increase your quality. If you have this kind of uh, multiple uh, environment, if you have in this uh, university or your country, so. Malaysia uh, successfully uh, they fulfill all kind of uh, requirement uh, so they have a very good system how an international student enter Malaysia so uh, education Malaysia they have a, a few step a very easy step to support the new student how they come so for my suggestion those who want to come Malaysia, especially Malaysia, for them my suggestion is you have to choose your related field first, your interested field first. Uh, don't change your field. Uh, you, you got uh, funding in this area, you, you just uh, move this area. No, you just, you related field. You graduated from this area, you must focus on same area. So it, it will be helpful for your uh, future career for job. So, if you focus on your related field, it will be uh, interesting. Huh? You can do interesting way because everything is uh, you know in this environment in this uh, study you know very well. Uh, sometimes we go new field and sometimes we don't understand. Oh, what is this new terminology? We can understand. So we have to have uh, expend more time to familiar with this kind of thing. Okay, this is first thing. And second thing is for funding. Uh, Malaysia, those who are research, uh, those who are in research university, so many professors they have related uh, project. So you have to choose. You have to search the related supervisor who will be your prospective supervisor. You have to choose your prospective supervisor uh, and then write them, write them email. Uh, nowadays, so many uh, way like uh, ResearchGate, LinkedIn, so many way you can write, write them. If you don't know about their email, if you don't know about them, so you can write. Uh, okay, by this way, you can get idea, you can get idea. Okay, then you uh, so many people also, this is also important, so many people sometimes don't know about the university status, don't know about the university quality, because some middlemen, they take advantage. If you if you do uh, some admission, you get some uh, money, it's a broker's money or some tips. So you must, uh, you must uh, aware about this kind of thing. Sometimes they bring you, okay, they say this university is very good. Huh? Why not you search uh, how are the ranking of this university? This is public university or public uh, private university. You have to uh, check with that. Everything is available in the, in the portal, uh, in the website. Huh? And most of Malaysian university is uh, world ranked university. Huh? So if you see first top 10 university in Malaysia, Okay, select this top 10 university. Then search your respective faculty or department, then choose your respective so, prospective supervisor. By this way, you go narrowing down. 
right not not simply some of college or some sometimes they come to uh, different uh, motive so right. in my question don't do this if you have different motive don't come to malaysia uh, like if you want to come you, you partially will work together uh, like this so no you, your your intention to do higher study you must concentrate on your study not other thing uh, so you must you must think about it that's why you choose the good university uh, so most of public university is very good uh, in my aspect uh, so right uh, so focus on uh, if you if you feel if you don't have ability so some of university very expensive like public university very expensive so why not you go uh, uh, public university sorry uh, private university is very expensive so why not you go public university public university tuition fee is very uh, compared to public private they are very cheap uh, so this 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 area you must focus uh, so right. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Realfedus, for I know for being us with uh, this this evening, and thanks for uh, being on air with Linkwit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear viewers who are listening out there this evening, let me share with you the aim of this scholar talk, uh, present by presented by or brought to you by uh, Linkwit Research and Training Center, is basically to give weekly dose of uplifting and inspiring real world story to Novik research uh, and postgraduate students. Uh, I believe uh, our discussion has some um, merits and uh, Dr. Uh, Real Feathers has um, shared many things from uh, his experience and I'm sure it's it going to be handy uh, and uh, will be some use to some extent uh, to understand about research, to understand about higher education and to understand about uh, teaching and uh, research. So with that note, we're thanking our guests uh, we are very honored today and we would like to again thank uh, Dr. Rial Fedos for uh, being with us and sharing uh, your thought with the audience who would love to have all sort of things. Uh, and um, thank you very much. And the uh, viewers and ladies and gentlemen also, we thank you for joining us. With that note, I'll see you again next Friday. Till then, stay safe, stay blessed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Good night.